Welcome back to AIT Learning Hub. Before I start this video, I would like to ask you all to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hello, my name is Tanmay Acharya and today I am going to talk to you about a very important structure in our brain called the cerebrum. For your convenience, I have divided this di discussion into four sections. First, we will explore the anatomical structure and position of the cerebrum. Next, will delve into its functions followed by its blood supply and lastly will discuss the various clinical implications associated with the cerebrum let us start by discussing the anatomical positions and structures of the cerebrum the cerebrum is the largest part of the human brain located anterior and superior to the brain stem it is divided into two hemispheres the right and the left false cerebri is a sickle shaped structure in the dura mater that divides the brain into its left and right cerebral hemispheres. The cerebrum is located inside the bony cranium and this is how the cerebrum appears when the bony cranium is opened. It extends from the frontal bone anteriorly to the occipital bone posteriorly. The tentorium cerebelli is a crescent shaped fold of the dura mater that separates the middle and inferior cranial fossae forming a protective roof over the cerebellum. Now let's discuss the internal structure of the cerebrum. The cerebrum is composed of the outer grey matter and inner white matter. The grey matter is the outer layer of each cerebral hemisphere known as cerebral cortex and is responsible for processing and cognitive functions. The white matter makes up the most of the brain deeper regions. It consists of glial cells and myelinated axons that connect the various areas of the grey matter. Let us now discuss the external structure of the cerebrum. It is a highly convoluted structure characterized by sulci, groups or depressions and gyri, ridges or elevations. The cerebrum is divided into two symmetrical hemispheres separated by the longitudinal fissure, a prominent sulcus that runs along the median sagittal plane. The corpus callosum is a white matter structure that connects the two cerebral hemispheres. The central sulcus separates the frontal and the parietal lobes. The lateral sulcus also known as the sylvian fissure. This sulcus separates the temporal lobe from the frontal and parietal lobes and the lunate sulcus it is a group that is located in the occipital cortex. The precentral gyrus ridge directly anterior to the central sulcus and location of primary motor cortex. Post central gyrus ridge directly posterior to the central sulcus, location of primary somatosensory cortex. Superior temporal gyrus ridge located inferior to the lateral sulcus, responsible for the reception and processing of sound. Now let us explore the different lobes of the cerebrum. The frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is the front part of the cerebrum situated beneath the frontal bone. It is separated from the parietal lobe by the central sulcus and from the temporal lobe by the lateral sulcus. The parietal lobe is situated below the parietal bone between the frontal lobe in front and the occipital lobe behind. It is separated from the frontal lobe by the central sulcus and from the occipital lobe by the parieto occipital sulcus. Additionally, it is positioned above the temporal bone separated by the lateral sulcus. The occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is situated at the back of the cerebrum below the occipital bone and is separated from the cerebellum by the tentorium cerebelli. It is distinct from the parietal and temporal lobes by parieto occipital sulcus. The temporal lobe. The temporal lobe is located beneath the temporal bone below the frontal and the parietal lobes separated by the lateral sulcus. The frontal lobe association areas are responsible for higher intellect, personality, mood, social behavior and language. The cortical association areas in the brain are responsible for managing language and calculation functions in the dominant hemisphere while handling visuospatial functions such as two-point discrimination in the non-dominant hemisphere. The primary visual cortex V1 found in the occipital lobe is responsible for vision. The cortical association areas of the temporal lobe are responsible for memory language and hearing. They include the primary auditory cortex. Let's discuss the functions of the cerebrum. The cerebrum controls and coordinates movement 
including planning complex movements it regulates vision hearing touch and other senses helps control speech and language controls conscious and unconscious behaviors cognitive thought thinking reasoning and problem solving controls emotions controls memory controls intelligence and regulates temperature now let's discuss the blood supply to the cerebrum the anterior cerebral artery or aca is a key artery in the brain that delivers oxygen rich blood through the frontal parietal and orbital areas the origin of aca is that aca branches off from the internal carotid artery at nearly a right angle it moves forward into the interhemispheric fissure over the genu of the corpus callosum and then backward along the corpus callosum the aca leads to the formation of orbital branches fronto polar branches callosal marginal arteries and pericallosal arteries the aca supplies blood to the medial and superior frontal lobe anterior parietal lobe and most of the corpus callosum the ac has five segments a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 ac infarctions are infrequent accounting for 0.3% to 4.4% of stroke cases males are affected more frequently than females and left sided ac infarcts are more common this is uh, the figure of a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 segments of the aca the middle cerebral artery mca is a significant artery in the brain providing blood supply to the frontal temporal and parietal lobes along with deeper structures the mca branches off from the internal carotid artery and is part of the circle of vellus an anastomotic system that connects the anterior and posterior cerebral arteries the mca supplies blood to the major cerebral hemispheres including language centers basal ganglia and internal capsule and is linked to processing tactile sensory information such as pressure touch and pain the mca is the most frequently affected artery during acute strokes when the mca is occluded it can lead to a range of symptoms based on the specific branches and structures involved for instance if the dominant hemisphere is impacted individuals may experience expressive aphasia or a decline in language comprehension the posterior cerebral arteries or the pca is a paired vessel that supplies blood to the midbrain thalamus occipital lobe and other parts of the brain the pca typically arises from the basilar arteries although it can also originate from the internal carotid artery the pca extends from the basilar artery wrapping around the cerebral peduncle and transversing over the tentorium cerebelli the pca extends into various branches such as thalamo geniculate splenial and posterior choroidal arteries the pca provides blood supply to the thalamus midbrain occipital lobe posterior medial temporal lobes choroid plexus as well as portions of the lateral third ventricles the pca is divided into four segments p1 to p4 which can be further categorized as deep as as deep and superficial posterior cerebral artery infarction a pathology related to the pca and fetal pca variant where the pca originates from the internal carotid artery either completely or partially venous drainage of the cerebrum occurs through a network of small cerebral veins these veins discharge into the dural venous sinuses which are endothelial lined spaces located between the outer and inner layers of the dura mater now let us delve into the clinical significance of the cerebrum a cerebrovascular accident or stroke is defined as a sudden loss of focal brain function lasting over 24 hours caused by either bleeding into the brain tissue or insufficient blood flow to a portion of the brain damage to the cerebrum in this context can lead to various clinical symptoms the specific type of functional deficit that occurs is determined by which lobe has been impacted patients having frontal lobe lesion can present with personality changes behavioral changes and problem solving inability while parietal lobe lesion patients can present with a condition called as contralateral hemisphere neglect syndrome where the patient neglects to pay attention to the side of the body that is opposite to the lesion temporal lobe lesions can present with visual and auditory deficits while occipital lobe 
lesions can present with visual field effects. Whereas patients having global lesion can present with a condition of severe cognitive deficit or called as dementia. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy the content of this channel, please consider liking, subscribing and sharing AAT Learning Hub. Thank you.